And welcome back to the theater of the mundane, inane, and useless, where I, Matt Scott, talk about plugins that I'm using right now based on the application and why they're cool when I live in a yurt and rely on a laptop to do a lot of mixing far away from plugins that I know better. Anyway, so in our last video, we covered EQs. I gave you five EQs that I feel bring the juju to my music, all the while requiring nothing from the UAV universe or access to internet, like so many plugins with subscription services require uh, at this stage in the game. So moving on to dynamics, uh, kind of a sandbox, honestly. I have more dynamics in this realm than I do EQs. It's not perfect. There's some substitutions I would make. I mean, obviously there's frankly a lot of shit in UAD that is my dynamics section work. Um, but we'll get back to that. Uh, so I'm gonna pick, I guess, five dynamics specific processors that get a good bit of use. Um, why I use them, why I think you should use them. Um, so first and foremost, I'm uh, going to start with one that I personally find to be kind of weird. I do use it a lot. I do use it quite a bit, mainly because the FET-style limiting amps are a thing that I don't have in abundance of sounds that I really like compared to UAD. The 1176LN is probably the one I use the most, and then the Silver Face I use regularly too. Silver is much brighter sounding and less muddy, I guess in some ways, or uh, on the output transformer. But anyway, um, so here we have the Purple Audio MC77, which face value looks like it's just a clone of an 1176. And I'm sure this is modeled off of it. Um, the thing I will mention, though, is that it has a lot of features that really aren't found on 1176, and that's kind of where things get sweeter. Um, so I think most importantly, I mean, the real winner here is the headroom knob. So you, you're already using a signal that's fairly hot or that's really quiet, and you're maxing input gain, but you're really still not seeing the needle move much. Remove some headroom, and it'll make it... And with gain staging, gain staging terms, it'll make the signal hotter to have your input section doing more. Um, it sounds dumb. Like, the applications in which that's helpful are more creative than not. Or, you know, you find that you're working on a mix and you've kind of painted yourself into a wall where <clears throat> you're getting close to peaking out and you're getting close to hitting that 0 dB or minus 6 or whatever you're mixing towards. And... Uh, the headroom knob still lets you get your co needed compression in the mix, but sometimes can save you some headache in terms of uh, raising the noise floor. So anyway, that's great. Uh, high pass sidechain filter, awesome. I mean, I've got outboard compressors that have that too, but it's still really useful. Um, it's nice that it's not detented, it's just sweepable. Um, anywhere from 20 hertz to 666, which seems intentional. Why not 667 or 664 or 660? What work for the Dark Lord has Purple Audio been up to? We may never know. Regardless, useful feature. Um, if you're not hip to what the application of this is in terms of a compressor, essentially what you're doing is you're saying, hey, compressor, I'm going to send you a bunch of signal, and some of that signal may have content that lives in kind of the base range or the lower mid-range. Um, but because lower frequencies tend to excite a compressor harder and faster, we don't always, you know, we're, let's say for example, we're processing an entire stereo drum image, and it's got everything from kick drum, which is very low, through cymbals, which is very high. The first thing the compressor is going to latch onto is going to be that kick drum, typically, because that is the loudest, lowest thing in your mix, and it's just the way sound works. With this, you can say, I don't want you to compress anything below 80 hertz, below 180, or below 666 hertz, uh, so that all your lows get left alone, and it's only focusing on the content of your highs. Super helpful. Um, 
and pretty common in a lot of compressors. But so it has it definitely and a uh, distinct advantage over a conventional 1176 plug-in. Finally, the real coup d'etat, because uh, we're not looking at a stereo image right now. Some of these are blacked out. But we have parallel mix option, which um, is basically you can smash the shit out of it, like hit the input really hard, fast attack, slow release, just really smack it and make it all combustible and dynamic and dirty sounding. And then with your parallel mix, you can just bring back in the clean signal. That's basically keep a percentage of the, of the affected and bring in unmixed. And what it does is it gives you the aggression of that with the smoothness of the ladder. And the two usually play nice together, sometimes in a flattering way. Um, you be the judge. But So that guy gets a lot of use as an 1176 stand-in. Um, the other one in that realm that gets a lot of use in that application would be this guy right here. Uh, and this is the leveling tool, which is a weird one. I'm going to let the dog out while I'm talking to you. ADHD audio. This is free. You can go onto their website right now and download it for free. Um, also, 1176 style compressor, um, but again, it's kind of flipped on its head. Now, this one's aggressive as hell. One of the things you'll notice down here in the left-hand corner is right out of the gate, even when you load it, the drive on it is set to 75%. I'm not sure algorithmically or practically what drive is doing at which stage uh, in it it's engaging, um, but it it, it sounds overdriven. It makes your signal sound hotter and more pissed off and punchier and honestly pretty good. It's, it's a great sounding compressor for really just creating punch, um, but it can come in a little hot. So I'll often start at zero and then bring the drive up once I start to figure out where I'm actually um, making the most of my gain reduction. Um, just like the last plug-in, this does have a sidechain high-pass filter, so from 0 to 250, not 666 purple audio, um, but enough to get your, generally, your kick drum and your bass out of the way um, when processing. Uh, attack and release, standard fare, ratio, uh, pretty different. You can actually crank this thing all the way to act as a limiter, so it'll go well beyond 20 to 1, um, which is when limiting starts. But they say limiting is actually a little bit further. It's after 22. So you can really limit with this thing or really compress with this thing. And everything is in ratios of blank to blank. Um, evenly all the way through 22 into limit. And then you have your dry wet. So uh, this thing, again, really aggressive. Um, it dramatically changed the quality of an audio source. It's also going to bring your volume up substantially. Um, so be prepared to grab that fader and pull down. But it sounds great. It really, it does the trick. Um, I've used it on a lot of records to positive success. Uh, I mentioned it before and I'll say it again. The SSL 9000J dynamic section, kind of a sleeper hit. I say sleeper hit just because it's embedded in a bunch of other tools. Um, but I'll absolutely run shit through the SSL and touch nothing else other than the dynamic section because it really does what it's supposed to do very transparently. Um, uh, I've used it a lot on toms. I've used it on acoustic guitar, pretty successfully voice rappers. Uh, the, the SSL J9000 in general um, for kind of, you know, fine tuning a mix with a pro Q and then actually doing the detail work with this. Uh, I've had a lot of success with a bunch of different rapper vocalists. Um, typically what I'll do in that instance, this doesn't really matter right now because again, I don't have UAD loaded, but I can at least show you. Um, often what I will do in that instance is I'll use the API vision channel strip uh, within console and the UAD universe and use it as a unison plugin. So it's really reacting to the kind of biases and tendencies of the actual vision channel strip from API and then mix with the SSL. Um, if you do a little detail work and a little digging, you'll see that a lot of great records and people have preferences like I'll only track through SSL and then I'll only mix through a focus right. People generally don't, oftentimes don't record in with the SSL and then mix on the SSL. They'll switch it up because too much SSL or too much Neve or too much focus right or too much API or too much Harrison or whatever can get the best of you. Um, but anyway, so this dynamic section pretty damn solid very utilitarian are you ready to come in dog went outside uh but i've gotten a lot of mileage out of it and i've generally been super happy so um 
I'm going to bring the dog in here for phase three. I'll even reposition the camera slightly. She was just outside. It was cold. Are you all better? Um, so, yeah, you could do a lot worse than an SSL J-Series compressor in your arsenal. And that was dirt cheap. Uh, other dynamics getting a lot of use right now. They're kind of, you know, I'm going to give you a couple different ones. I mean, is a gate a form of dynamics? Absolutely it is. Operates under all the same pretenses. Its function is just a little different, and it's not necessarily attenuating in the way that a compressor is designed to, although you really can um, exploit it in that way, both with ducking and all kinds of applications. Um, but here we have a real brute, the Oxford drum gate. Again, something I got on a wicked discount, I think. I don't remember what the circumstances were, but I, I know I really, as you'll probably notice, don't pay for or pay full price for anything in the plug-in realm. There's just too many ways around it, uh, especially if you're patient. But anyway, uh, detection circuit, decay circuit, and then a leveler. Um, and it auto-detects based on the style of drum that you're using and then optimizes transient response um, to really kind of hug the... Uh, the piece of drum kit that you're trying to gate um you know it's a very like common occurrences if you're if you've not used drum gates before allow me to elucidate so you've recorded a snare drum now you're mixing the snare drum when you recorded the snare drum the sm57 you had on the snare drum was also catching some hi-hat sound because they're right next to each other now in the editing and in the mixing stage you want to bring that snare drum to life and it has a lot of presence kind of in its upper mid-range or or wherever the case may be for our purposes we'll say that so let's say even you know 4.6k or something we're we're getting into into uh upper harmonic territory there's a really flattering component of your snare wire that you'd like to bring out in the snare drum but every time you do it you're also bringing out hi-hat well what a gate does is Ideally, in the spaces between where you're hitting a snare or you're playing a hi-hat, even though the mic captured both, it'll automatically be ducking or shaping itself to kind of avoid the hi-hat sound and gate it up or close that sound up while letting your snare drum through. And in its most primitive, that's how gates operated. Now we have technology like this from Oxford where they're using, I think, I think there's an AI component. I have to read into it. I don't care that much. It just works really well. Um, but anyway, a way to really isolate your drum sounds before you EQ or compress or whatever that oftentimes can help your mix. Um, things to be aware of, though, I will say if you're not really careful with a gate and you're not really thinking about ghost notes and all the elements of a drum kit or whatever that need to be presented, you could end up obscuring content that actually helps the drum sound better or really, frankly, like is integral to a part. Um, so use gates judiciously, but this one as kind of living in the dynamics realm goes is pretty sweet uh gets a lot of love last but not least in our five dynamics i'm going to bring you through this guy which in many ways i feel like i'm still getting to know i've probably had soothe for a half a year or longer at this point which feels like it should be enough time um, it's also gotten use i would say almost on every mix i've done um, but what is it it's it's resonance control um resonant frequencies resonant frequency build up across the spectrum of human hearing in your mix and what this does i mean it looks like an eq plug-in right well it kind of functions like one too the way that it does its work is totally different um, but what it really does is you can use it to remove resonances in a tom drum snares are sounding really too bright or hammy and it'll get in there and clean up frequency content it'll do like dsing type chores for you but think about DSing across the spectrum of human hearing, right? Like DSing is this very particular kind of EQ that when we think about it, we're thinking from whatever, 5.5 to 7.5 and where the S's and the plosives and the shitty sounds come from, the tackiness that we don't like in the human voice and not thinking it in there and grab them and remove them. This does that, but it'll do it kind of across the spectrum. Um, and you can oversample it, which, you know, we don't need to get into what that is right now, but like, essentially the flexibility with this thing is is second to none um it has a great reputation you can overdo it really quickly um i've heard from plenty of people that they used it a lot until they realized um it was kind of sucking the life out of mixes um uh because it's real easy initially when something sounds good to just go depth yeah we're really cleaning that up now that's really clean look how different that sounds 
And then you go back two days later and you're like, wait, this was a guitar sound. Now it sounds like a synthesizer. Like, it sounded cool in the moment, but it's probably better for it to sound like a guitar. Let's get set the depth back. And then you find that dividing line that still accomplishes what you're looking for when you move ahead. But anyway, um, for cleaning up transients in a voice, for cleaning up guitars that maybe have a little too brightness or chew and they need to sit better in the mix without being so tacky or plosive or tinny sounding or whatever, I mean, look at the preset list. It's kind of exhaustive, and they have everything from orchestral work through synthesizers, sound design, songwriting, and production, um, and it works really well, maybe too well, um, one of those type of plugins. So anyway, that's another fiver for you. Um, if you like what you've heard or you want to hear examples or learn more about what any of these hogs do, shoot me a message. Um, I'm happy to send you examples. Obviously, one thing I'm not doing right now is actually playing a track and demoing shit for you. I don't really want to. Um, I don't know that I could convince you via Zoom, via Pro Tools on YouTube, but that's the thing you need to have, nor do I want to tell you it is. Um, those are just five tools that I've used a lot as of late and I've had great success with and will continue to use um, in my off-grid situation. And you may decide to give them a try, especially the ones that are free, to decide if there's a place for them to help you out too. Um, not that you're off-grid, but it's always nice to know there's other tools out there and other ways to get a job done. So all that said, uh, I'll be in touch again soon, trying to decide what direction to go in next. Honestly, I think time-based effects would be cool, either delays or reverbs. Maybe I'll combine the two. Um, because I think within a series of five, I could give you a pretty sweet overview. Um, and then we'll do one more that's kind of a wrap up because not all the plugins I favor right now can really be conveniently put into a bubble. They're more niche, um, but they solve really critical needs and do them really well. Um, so we'll go back and hit that up. In the meantime, uh, happy mixing to you, happy production to you, happy life to you. Go outside, do something, do something for someone else while you're also outside. You want to kill two birds with one stone or feed two birds with one seed because we're progressive in the year 2023. Um, yeah, do that. And we'll chat again soon. Um, lots more videos coming up and they probably won't all be potato quality. All right, peace.